All right, here's the new DMP exporter. Let's go through how it works. This has been a lifesaver for me. It sped up my time and my workflow tremendously because all you have to do now is just click the go and it'll export the layers that you need with the correct color space if you choose to use the color space workflow and naming conventions and everything for you to get it to work properly inside of Nuke. You can use a TIFF file or you can use EXR. I recommend using EXR because Nuke is actually built for EXRs and they're lighter and just smarter, faster files. So if you want to use TIFF, you have the option to do 16 32 bit. Maybe you're a concept artist and you can just export out a, a bunch of different variations of your concepts in 16 bit form. You probably don't need 32 bit. And maybe in the future, I'll actually switch it over to JPEG. Now let's do a quick demonstration of what it will do. For the most part, what you're doing is that you will export out as an EXR, unpremolt it, um, will be expanding your pixels. So let's switch over to a quick merge of it. And what you'll do is export out these individual layers named out and go to script, DMP exporter. The unpremolt will expand the pixels out while maintaining the original alpha. So when you are inside of Nuke, you will have the ability to grade it properly and you won't have those weird edges that you often get. And then you'll have a gamma correction. We'll get into that later, dealing with the color space workflow and then show confirmation alert. And this will add a suffix of whatever you type in there. What I always just use is, is just a version, but you can add anything you want and it will add an underscore after your layer name and whatever is in here. So let's say you do a version 001, it will go clouds underscore version 001. If you have any spaces in your names, it will give you a warning to let you know. So you can either cancel it or continue with it because typically you want underscore after each name just because of naming conventions and you might get errors in certain softwares, but it's up to you. Let's show how it's done. So quickly, what you typically do is that you work underneath the LUT. So you would just grab the layers that you want and duplicate them over into a new scene. You would go in and merge every uh, layer together. So you have one element. So for instance, this head, I have some paintings here on top of it and little bits here. So I would take that and merge them together, right? So it's just one file and you name it head, etc., etc. So what you would come out with are your individual elements. So you have your clouds, you have your head, you have your waterfall, and you have your stairs. Let's go to script, DMP exporter. Let's pick a location. I usually do Photoshop and export, and then I'll do a new folder called, let's say, version six. Okay, and hit version six in there. And since I had worked in the color space workflow, I'm gonna have the gamma checked on and I'll go over the full process in a bit. I just want to show you how this part works and you just hit export. And it will go through each and individual layer. So if you want to cancel in the middle of it, you can just hit escape. And as this uh, duplicates, you might have noticed the different tabs open. When you hit escape and it cancels it, they'll be left open. So just close them out and get back to your original one and do whatever you need to do. So inside a nuke, you have all your layers that you exported. And you can see that version six is added to each layer name with an underscore and you open and they're all here. You can see the head has the alpha. For me, I have to switch back to the color aces color space so I can get back to the color, which I'll explain in a bit. There, color alpha's in there, so we would pre-molt it. I mean pre-multiply it. So you just do a pre-molt. In the end, what you do is just you treat it like any other comp. You have your original plate, you put it on top with all these different layers, and then you can see this was just a quick little mock-up I made just to, for demonstration's sake, and you can show that each one is separate. Disable them, disable, 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 and disable. So you can see it all works properly. Every studio has its own color space workflow. For map painters, we want to paint in log, so we have that full dynamic range. 
what that essentially is. So let's say for Asus, this is the original plate that you have. Let's just imagine whatever it is. It could be live action footage or render. So we want to bring into the log. So we'll do OCIO and we switch the output to Asus CC. So now it's washed out. And that's what you want to paint on because it's giving you more information in the blacks and in the highlights. So when we export this out, if it's a if it's an element or a render with alphas or anything like that, you would switch this to RGBA. So you maintain the alpha and pick your location. Let's say Asus plot test 02 uh, EXR and save. You know, switch the EXRs here. You don't need to do anything else. If you, again, if you need the alpha, you just switch to the RGBA. And so for this, we don't need that. It's just a full on plate and we do a render and we'll open it and you hit okay. And this is now currently in 32 bit, which you can see. Now I also have an action that is included in this product that will convert it from 32 to 16 bit. But in Photoshop it's different from Nuke since it's sRGB color space is completely different from Nuke. So you have to apply a gamma correction, which this will do automatically for you. So your LUTs will work properly inside of Photoshop. So you click that and now you have it looking like this. And now it's an easier range. You can see it more, right? So all you have to do now is just take, I already have this in here. So I'll just duplicate it over. And you'll see that it's back to the correct color that we want. And all this is just a color lookup in the adjustments down here. So color lookup. And then you just grab the, the dot cube file location that you have, which you'll see, I'll just delete this, I'll delete this. You'll see this one, if I double click on it, I have Asus LUT dot cube, which would bring it, it could be any LUT that you have. It could be the studio LUT, it could be anything. But this is specifically for Asus and I just wanted to be back to Asus. Now I can paint underneath it like I was doing in here. So if I let go of this, you'll see all the elements that I will be exporting out are in that range. But I have this as a temporary color adjustment on top of the whole thing. So when I export it out, I export all the layers underneath the LUT. It's always good to maybe just take that and change the color to red and actually call it LUT. So when you export them out, this is why you have the gamma because now that little adjustment that we had in 32 to 16 bit, I need to do the inverse of that. And I do that here and it will bring it to that even more washed out look. Now you don't have to use this so you can just disable it and you don't have to use the unpreborn either because some situations they don't work out perfectly and you have to experiment different ways of maybe getting the edge to look better. So this is why I have the options to be able to during certain scenarios, you'll have some weird things that go on, whatever. But for the most part, it's going to be like this. Most studios are going to be like this. Your freelance should be like this, but maybe you don't get a lot. Maybe you just want to do a concept. So when you have a concept, you disable the gamma and you have the LUT baked in. Maybe you just want to have everything baked into it and you have it. It's TIFF. Now with TIFF, you can still have these enabled as well. Just so 16, 32 bit. So EXR in there and that's how it works. It's very simple, takes care of all that stuff for you. And there is one situation that I actually do import as a TIFF out of Nuke is volumes, renders, clouds, but not necessarily painted clouds. I've noticed that when I do a render that are volumes, so clouds or anything, EXRs don't really read the edges so well, especially when I'm switching out the whole color and everything. I would actually render it out as a TIFF file. So we have a cloud in here that's just say it's a, a render. We have to actually bring it back to the render like kind of thing because this is from my I'm pre and everything. So now let's just say this is a, a render from a volume from Maya and we want to still bring it into log space. So we're working ACES. So we'll do output as CC to bring it washed out. You see it's washed out here and then we'll do a Right node file, we'll just do cloud test 02.tiff, replace whatever it was, and it will go to 8 bit. You want it in 16 bit, and we want to keep the alpha, so we have to switch the RGB to RGBA, and we'll hit render, open up in Photoshop. And since we did that wash out look, we, it's already in 16 bit, so we don't need to do the 32 to 16 bit. You could just do that, and it will apply 
the the gamma correction that you need so it's actually easier i was going to show you just to do it manually but i guess you could just push the button again and it doesn't matter because it's already 16 bit and so now the difference between a tiff and the exr is that exr will automatically cut out the alpha for you so in here you have to go in here control select the alpha that's in the channels and you'll see it's selecting it and hit a mask apply it so now you actually have it in there so now you want to do a defringe because anything that you're bringing out of re a render is going to have some weird edges it's like a single pixel edge thing so you do this for elements any elements and you just do a layer matting defringe of one pixel and it will fix the, the very edge and then you can duplicate it over to octane p put it underneath the LUT and now it's working. Let me see if I can actually display that edge going on here. See the weird edges here? Apply. And then cleaned it up. Um, if you want to clean it up even more, you can just add a layer to that area and I dropped that color and just paint it even whiter. Nothing's ever perfect. For the most part, you're not going to need to do stuff like that. But for volumes, you might have to clean some stuff a little bit extra. So yeah, so then you just export, do the workflow. You go to DMP exporter, export all your elements as EXR on Premult to expand the pixels. You have the options to disable it or not. You bring it into Nuke. You can see, boom, Premult. Now there's one thing that I have noticed it's a Photoshop issue. What happens is that if you're exporting out your layers and it's taking forever on just one layer or something, the reason why that's most likely happening is because you have a big file open and it's being saved in the background because by default, Photoshop has auto saves. Photoshop won't save or do any other actions until that file is done saving. So what you could do if you notice that's taking a while is just go to that file, whatever's being saved in the background. And then here's a, an example. If I hit save down here, you'll see a progress bar. And if you don't see it, you can always switch it to save progress by hitting this arrow. And so you hit save, whatever. Okay. And you hit X that will cancel the save down there. Sometimes maybe it won't even show up and you can just hit save and it will pop up again and just hit X and then that will end it and then you just go back to exporting out your layers and it'll be fast again. Since I'm working on huge files all the time now, I'll just go to my preferences, preferences, general. I'll go to file handling and turn off my automatically save recovery file. So this is risky because if Photoshop crashes, then you'll lose your file. So just be sure if you are doing this to just save often so you don't lose your files. For most people, they don't have to do that, but I'm a rare exception where I'm, I am working on huge files all the time and that will fix your issue. Now, sometimes there are challenges when you're exporting out, like if you have some soft edges like clouds or something, your alphas might not be 100% perfect. So you could go in there and just add a grade underneath your color space change and switch it to alpha and then gamma and then you can erode the let's just go into here you can start eroding a little bit on the edges so you're just tearing into it because sometimes it'll give you a bit too much from the unpremolt so that's why sometimes you want to experiment not using the unpremolt versus using the unpremolt i always end up using the unpremolt and then just adjusting this and sometimes rarely but sometimes on sharp edges or some other weird hard edges you'll get these individual pixels tiny dots around not this many but like in random spots you can just roto it out or you can just do, use the same techniques it's usually best to not do two pre molts just to use this but you can also experiment adding two pre multiplies but that usually isn't the best result yeah so that's just a workaround if you have any issues or bugs or questions be sure to Join the Discord and you can get that the Atmo website at atmovfx.com and go to Discord up here. And yeah, that's it. And hang out with us and be sure to create a profile on Atmo and upload your own artwork, share your work, environment artists everywhere. Let's join together, help each other out and spread the word of Atmo. Enjoy the tool, guys.